All right, so this is going to be a demo on how you can get uh, started on your data path. Um, we'll do uh, quite a few pieces in uh, this video, and then you'll just finish it up on your own. So the first thing we want to do is on Canvas, go to your uh, files right here. And in our files, you'll see that there is a TSC library control file right here. We want to download that so we can import it into Logisim. So the next thing you want to do after you download that file is rename it. It'll be a .xml. Rename it to be a CIRC um, extension. That way it's a Logisim file and Logisim will be able to find it. After you've renamed it, put it in the same folder as your project file is. So your project file is the one with your ALU and your ALU bit and your adder and your mux. So once those are in the same folder, you're ready to import this into your project. Now, this is a diagram of what our goal is in this uh, project is to make our data path. So the data path um, will hopefully have lectures uh, before this describing uh, this in more detail. But the data path is how information or data moves around through our ALU and gets its way into different registers that we have right here. So um, this is our goal. So I'll go ahead and open up my um, data path or my uh, project. And um, you can see here, hopefully you can open your project to follow along. You should have your ALU and your ALU bit. Now, uh, just because I, I built these all together, um, for you, I've exported these things into a library. So you'll find those in the library that you just loaded. Um, in mine, they're in the main section. I'm going to go ahead and add a circuit. I'm going to call it the data path. And this will actually be the main circuit of your computer when you're running your uh, programs. This will be the circuit that you're looking at. So. Um, one thing, the next thing we want to do is we want to grab our ALU down out here. Now I recommend zooming way down to like 20%. Put your ALU down here somewhere. Just give yourself plenty of room to put all of the different components that we're going to have to put on here. Um, then you can zoom back in and scroll over and down until you find it. And now we can drag our bus uh, three wire down and pull it all the way over here. All right, so off camera, I finished dragging that bus three wire up on both sides. And then I have my bus two wire that I drug up and my bus one wire. So you can see I am trying to uh, do this right here. And then I have my bus one and my bus two. I'm going to go into my wiring and I'm going to grab those probes. It will be ever so helpful right here. I'm going to pro put a probe on the top of each one of these wires all the way across. So now you can see I have my probe, two probes on bus three on either side, um, one probe on bus one, one probe on bus two. Now you can always go into here and change these. It's probably be best to use hexadecimal to see that. So over here, we we'll use hex. So now we have uh, at least probes so we can see what's on this um, right here. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to build uh, this part right here. We're going to put down our PC counter. We're going to have a switch bank so some people can put in a number and load our program counter, point our program counter wherever they want. And we're also going to make sure our PC counter connects to bus one. And hopefully you know these arrows mean that we're going to have a tri-state uh, buffer there. So I went ahead and did um, this off camera, but um, just to see what I did, I went and I grabbed the register right here, placed it down. Notice the D is the input, the Q is the output. Okay, so we place that register down, we hook the clear, to our master reset button right here. And hopefully in the uh, other lecture, this is low asserted. So when it's off, it's on. And when it's on, it's off. So it's just switched. And that's what the little circle up here means is it's low asserted. Um, so we hook that up to our reset. 
and we take our clock right here. I just did a little circuit right here, and this helps us. Sometimes we want bus 3 to get into our register, and other times we want the person to be able to click the wires like F, F, F5, like we've done in previous labs like that. And then we got a little push button. So um, again, this is just an input switch right here, one of these that I turned into 16. And then um, this right here you'll find in, uh, I believe, the input, output. It's just a little button right there that we dragged out and put a button right there. This again is a, a input switch of length 1. This guy right here is our tri-state buffer. So we place him down. We placed him down. We hooked um, PC to bus one. So hopefully, you, when you learn about the data path, you learn about all of that. And um, so whenever we put a number there, we, I could show you. I can hold down this button. Um, let me grab that. Press the button. And this has to be a high voltage for it to work. But we can press down our button, and there we go. We got FFF five onto our um, into our register. So now we got a little load PC button. This guy right here is just a mux, so I grabbed him um, out of uh, the plexers right here, it's just a multiplexer. Let me show you the settings that I put on this multiplexer. There's one select bit, 16 data bits. So that's like 16 wires, and it just chooses do we want this to connect to here or do we want this to connect to here. So if it's a low voltage, we get this. If it's a high voltage, we get that. And this little push button and that little circuit that I did right here allows us to do that. So that'll give us a um, our program counter. So I forgot to mention that I also put switches on all of my operations right here on my ALU. So you want to put switches there so that you could tell your ALU what operation to do. And now we're going to work on this piece right here, which is the biggest and most complicated piece of the project. So we could see here we're going to have a tri-state buffer, a register, the memory address register, another register called the memory buffer register. And um, if you notice, whenever there's two arrows pointing into something, that means we got to have a MUX right here, except for this where we have tri-state buffer. So there's going to be a MUX right here and our memory. So we're going to build that. So I went ahead and did some work off camera for this. By the way, these are um, probes uh, just in the wiring path right here. These are probes just so we could see the value that the register has. The register is always spitting out that uh, data on its wires so we can see what that data is. Um, here is my MAR right here. So again, just another register. You get that out of the library that you imported. Connect the reset to the master reset switch. So you can see I got a tunnel that's my master reset. And then we got a switch bus 3 to MAR right here. And um, then, uh, so you can place that down, put a probe on it. Then the next piece you might want to place down is memory. So where do we get memory from? Well, there's a memory folder over here you should have. And uh, just grab um, RAM, R-A-M is what you want to grab out, out of here. Um, place it down like that. And then you'll have to change the settings. So I'll click and show you all the settings. So the address bit width is 16, and the data bit width is 16. You also want to say separate load and store ports right there. So that will give you separate load and store ports. And that will give you all of these inputs right here. Now, some of these things, memory has a lot more functionality that we're not really going to do much with. but. Um, if you hook it all up like this, then you should. Now, if you notice um, the clear right here, this clears all of memory. I didn't want to have the reset clear. I want the reset to clear all the registers, but I don't want it to wipe memory out either. So that's why I hooked an my own switch up to there. 
So my address lines come in here. And then um, the data, if whenever we want to write to it, if we want to write new stuff into memory, we put that right here. And, and the memory out right here, this is the information coming out of the memory. So if you notice, we have zero right here, all zeros right here. And here's our memory. If I right click and I edit the contents, this is memory location zero. I'm just going to pick the word dead in, in memory. So this is a, a, a cheap trick where we can just type in what we want to be in memory right here. Um, go ahead and turn this right up high voltage right there and so we see that the address zero so this is the address we can see that the dead comes out now um, the dead will come over here into our mux right here um, let me show you the principles of this mux again one select bit 16 data bits so we can um, do that and now we can see that the data coming out of memory will get put into this MUX and now it's feeding in to the input of our memory buffer register. When we go from a low to a high voltage, and then the word dead gets put there. And then we have another tri-state buffer that connects us to bus one. By the way, um, this up here, I don't know if I showed you that that connects down to bus one right here uh, from our ALU. And if you can see right here, I also put an input. I just grab a switch bank, um, a tri-state buffer, and input to bus one there. So one thing, because all these are low asserted, when you first load your, open your file, these will all be off, which really means on. So you have to go and turn them all on to shut them off. So um, anyway, uh, again, this is just another register, another probe, um, not gate. Uh, this is a hard-coded one, just to make sure you know how to do that. Just go to the wiring, and you can grab a constant out of here, place it down, make sure the data bits is zero, and then you can say one right there. Now we have a hard-coded wire just like that. And um, that should be your memory. And just in case you were wondering, this right here, of course, is bus 3 that kind of comes all the way down out of my um, ALU right there. So um, next, let's work on let's work on this piece right here. We'll work on one of our registers right here. And if you notice, the bus 3 comes into the input of the register, and then the register splits and connects two times, once to bus two and once to bus one. Now you can see here bus uh, three comes out this way, comes up to here. And if you notice, um, in order for to have the D be the input, like we had in our registers over here, so you know it's the D is the input on all of our registers, I turn this register upside down. So um, while I want to Put a tunnel right here. Uh, make sure the tunnel is only one data bit and call it reset. So again, everything's upside down, so reset's now on the bottom, the clock is now on the top, the D is now on the right side, the Q is now on the left side. So um, and then coming out, we can see that this splits two ways. So one will hook up to bus two, and the other one hook up to bus one right here. So we can see that those hook up um, that way. And then, of course, we'll just put switches on here. Now, if you notice, I grabbed the wire out of that tri-state buffer. Uh, let me show you some mistake that a lot of people will make after I label this. So this is general purpose register 0 to bus 2. So, um, and we'll have that be go to the south right there. 
Um, so one thing that you might do is you might put your switch down uh, somewhere and we'll put it up here maybe um, and we might go like this and just connect it right there but if you drag this thing you notice you didn't actually connect it so again pull the wire out of that um, tri-state buffer and connect it to make sure it's really connected and I would do that on all the other components as well and so we'll label this guy GPR 0 to bus 1. Okay, and, and so that's how all of our registers uh, work. And again, I uh, recommend with this probe right there, putting a probe right there so we can see and uh, maybe have that be hex. So we can see the value inside of the register right there. Now I did this for register 0, you're going to have to do it again for register 1, 2, and 3. So you're going to need four of these uh, diagrams total. The only difference uh, will be that this will be bus 3 to register 1, register 1 to bus 2, register 2 to bus 1. So we um, have all of that there. Um, as you can see, I have put my 1. This is a hard-coded 1. This is just to put a 1 onto our bus 2. That's to increment our program counter. Um, in fact, this guy, because he's on the bus right now, that's why all the wires were red. And so how did I do that? Well, I went and I grabbed the constant and I made the 16 data bits wide and turned it upside down. And now you can connect that. This here is just a tri-state um, buffer. Um, and this again, I enable switch. And then I just took this guy right there. And if you notice, that's all zeros. So we can just say 0, 0, 0, 1. Um, so that's just the number 1 that we can hook in to there. So um, I should probably pause and finish up all your registers right now. We've made this part, we made this part. I got an input device on there. The output device, you could just put a probe on bus three somewhere, um, or you can have it be a register. You could get more fancy if you want, but a probe would do. And then um, hopefully I did one of these. You want to do the other uh, three of those, and we've done that. So our last thing is the instruction register. So the instruction register is going to look a lot like these, except for they're going to have four um, is going to split four ways and connect to the bus in four different ways. So here's my instruction register and you can see I have the four tri-state buffers. Now two of them will hook on to um, bus two and the other two hook on to bus one. So again we would do that and then uh, so we got, again, the upside down register. We got bus 3 to IR, and now we have the four connections. So I'm going to show you how you might do one connection of the four, and then you'll have to do the remaining three on your own. So the one I'm going to do is upper immediate to bus 1. So if you read through this, uh, your assignment, that says this is for the load high uh, immediate instruction or the LHI. So what we do is you uh, go to your home page, click on readings, and then click on instructions. And then we'll go uh, find the load high immediate instruction. And now you have to read this and hopefully make sense of it. But the basic idea is we, you know, this is uh, information telling us what register and what the instruction is. That's not really a number that we want to become part of our data. Remember, it's the data path. We're not trying to put our instructions into the data. But this is, this immediate value is a number that we want to become part of our data. So we want to take this, these bits, bits 0 through 7, out of the instruction and place it onto one of the buses so it could become part of our data. So um, if you look here, the 8-bit immediate value is concatenated to 8 bits of 0. 
the immediate value being the most significant half of the word or half word and then the results it's placed in RT. So and then this is a little thing the double uh, hashtag means I concatenate so we have bit 0 through 7 with at the top bits and eight zeros down here so we want this to get shifted up into the top bits from bit 15 to 8 and then we want to fill this in with 0. So we want to take the instruction coming out we want to take this immediate out and then we want to put it on the bus but on the upper bits. So how I'm going to do that I'm going to grab a splitter right here um, this is after I've kind of split this up to go four different ways right here and we'll connect one of these things to the splitter um, it's not liking that because our splitter needs to be a 16 bits wide and I'm only going to fan it out two and just by that and I'll zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better um, you can see this wire has bits 0 through 7 so those that is the immediate value now we want to hook that up to this guy but on bits 8 through 15 so I'm going to grab another splitter um, and in fact it might be easier to just uh, copy and paste this one okay and we'll turn it around and again um, hopefully you see if you so uh, there we go kind of dragging extra wires here oops so you can see if you have more room to work with this will be a little bit easier that's why I recommended you zoom way out and give yourself plenty of room to work with okay so now I'm going to feed the immediate value into the upper eight bits of this instruction right here and I'm going to call this uh, upper immediate to bus one and we'll put that on the south right here and now but um, now this is okay this is information coming out of here these wires will just die um, but this does need some information so we know that we want to concatenate um, eight zeros there so we can just grab a constant make it eight bits wide and um, turn it upside down and, and connect it there so and now we've done what the instructions say we took the immediate value that was in bit 0 through 7 we placed it in the upper bits bits 8 through 15 and we had um, the lower bits uh, be filled in with zeros okay so you want to look at um, the target address you're going to look at a jump instruction right here um, for the signed immediate you'll probably uh, look at the add immediate instruction now remember you don't have to do the adding we just have to get the immediate onto the bus your your ALU will do the adding and then uh, right here there's the unsigned immediate instruction and you can look in the reading there's an instruction for that probably the or immediate or, or RI instruction that tells you how you take some uh, take the immediate value out of the instruction and place it onto this and we got to fill it up with uh, zeros or something else so make sure you read that uh, guide to know what you fill it up with so um, just finish up that of course you need to finish up all of the other registers I only did one register here but other than that you should finish it all up all right now I'm going to show you how to pass off um, so this is we're going to simulate the fetch sequence and then we'll test a few other things to make sure everything is working so hopefully you learned about the fetch sequence in um, another video or in our, in our class uh, period so um, what I, we're going to do first and I've already done it but I'll show you how is we'll edit the contents of memory and um, in the third spot so this is the 0 1 2 Three. so in the third spot we're going to put the word dead d-e-a-d -E this is something really easy that we can recognize um, so it, remember this is a hex number so these are really the hex numbers right there so once we got dead in the third spot we'll go up to our uh, program counter right here 
Now um, make sure that you got all of these tri-state buffers shut off, and remember a high voltage means off. So make sure you got all the tri-state buffers shut off. Now you guys see that I have some errors on my bus 3, um, but check all of these tri-state buffers, make sure they're all shut off. So they all are. The other thing is, is make sure all the operations are shut off too to start. Okay, and then um, make sure this is a high voltage or else your push button won't work. So we'll put the number 3 in the memory address 3 and we'll click this as like our load PC button. And you see we got 3 into our program counter. Since we got 3 into our program counter, we go down here, we turn on TRA1 right here, um, and let's see. Oh, and then turn on PC to bus 1 too, so we could get the 3 onto our bus 1. And then TRA1 passes that 3 through there, and we're going to clock it into our uh, memory address register right here. So, bam, now it got, now it has 3. So remember the registers change their value when it goes from a 0 to um, a high voltage right here. So now we got the number 3 right there. Okay, now um, memory should be looking up what's that memory location 3. It's already did it, it's pretty fast, but as our computer, we it had, it'll take a little time to look that up, and we're going to take advantage of that time to add 1 to our program counter. So we'll turn on 1 to bus 2, Let's turn off TRA 1, and turn on add in our ALU. So now we should be at having 3 from our PC counter on bus 1, and 1 on bus 2 from this guy right here, and we'll see that they're adding up to 4. So now that we got the 4 up here, um, we can go ahead, and this is how the computer controls it. This is our push button, a user, but the, the computer controls these switches, so this switch will toggle, and we should see 4 right there. And if you want to try it a little more, every time you toggle it, it'll keep adding 1 to it. But just do it at least once as you test it, so again, you'll, you'll need to make a video of this, of you doing this, to pass off uh, your assignment. So now that we got that working, we can uh, shut him off, um, shut off that, and shut off that right there. And now we'll go ahead and go to memory right here. So memory is now looking up, and we got dead coming out here. So make sure our mocks, instead of selecting bus 3, um, should be selecting the dead coming out of memory. And we'll go ahead and clock that into this register here. So you see now this register has the word dead. We'll put that onto bus 1. So now dead coming out onto bus 1. That's our instruction, our pretend instruction. We'll turn on TRA1 so we got dead out onto bus 3. And go ahead and clock that into your registers here. Um, do it for all four to make sure that all four registers work. And then, last but not least, your instruction register. So now we have dead coming out of our instruction register. Right there. Um, and then we can shut this guy off right there. And now the last test is to make sure you hooked all these things up right. So I'll show you the right answer for this upper immediate right here. When we turn it on, if you notice the AD, the lower bits, got shifted up to the upper bit, so we got AD 0, 0. So zeros got put in for the lower bit. So that's the right answer for the upper immediate. I'll tell you the right answer for the unsigned immediate. If we were to do this, if it's unsigned, then it should be 0, 0 AD right there. The signed immediate should be FF. AD, so that's the signed immediate. And then last you have the target. So when you turn on the target, it should be 0 EAD. That's what you should get. Unless you go over to your program counter right here and put in uh, something in the upper four bits. So this might kind of give away the answer and what you need to do for the target right here. But when you do that, then you should see C Notice I got C in my upper four bits of my program counter, so we should see whatever is there up here, and then um, EAD down here. So the EAD should be in these four spots, and then the upper four of the PC should be in that spot. 
So to pass off, make a video starting with uh, editing your memory. Just make sure we see dead in there. Then go through the fetch sequence, clock dead into all your registers as well, and then show me um, turning on all of these switches. And that's the video you'll make to pass off your assignment.